tonight, Tropical Storm Yvette is on borrowed time in the Eastern Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Weather Bulletin for August 16th. So a fairly quiet tropics still with us here on uh, another day here. Yvette, a tropical storm that developed earlier after it displayed decent amounts of convection uh, and satellite estimates reaching 40 mile per hour briefly and Miri, the remnants still traceable in the northern part of the Kamchatka Peninsula. On day 77 in the Atlantic, the basin is quiet with no areas of interest to be monitoring whatsoever. Three storms so far this year in the Atlantic. It is below average for the time of year. Day 94 for the Eastern Pacific shows Tropical Storm Yvette. You saw the satellite imagery earlier. It looks pretty abhorrent at this point, uh, but it did look better earlier. National Hurricane Center are probably going to pull the plug on it fairly soon. It's the ninth tropical storm of the basin this year. In the Western Pacific, all we've got is the remnants of Miri, which is so far off the screen, uh, it's not even funny. It's around 55 degrees north, I believe, at this point. And in the Indian Ocean, no areas of interest there either, so the Eastern Hemisphere is very quiet. I don't think it will remain that way for that long, uh, but for the time being, it is. It does appear that across the world it's going to be quite a quiet week. Let's check some satellite imagery then, looking first at the Atlantic, and it seems that even the satellites are starting to give up with the quiet season so far. Um, and you can see across the basin, just general uh, convective showers and thunderstorms over the off the mid-Atlantic and also in the main tropical zone over Cuba particularly. Over the eastern Pacific, GO-17 is broken right now and we don't have access to 18 yet on this imagery, but you can still see on GO-16 what's going on over there. The remnants of Invest 98L still churning away over in Texas and of course the blow up of Yvette. Uh, looking at this imagery once again, uh, showing you some radar there of uh, 98L still there moving well inland. It's just hovering the border with Mexico now at this point, um, way over the drier parts of uh, North America. And then down there you can see Yvette which is still blowing up just a tiny little bit of convection with those latest frames. But honestly when you look at the visible imagery it's looking a little bit stark for Yvette and its soon to be remnants. Um, the circulation and the system itself is probably going to last for quite a while though. National Hurricane Center's track forecast has it for several days yet. I'm not sure if it's full day, five day cone, but it's quite a few dots on the forecast cone. So it's got a while to be a remnant for. And in the Western Pacific, um, not too much going on here right now. There's a lot of general disturbances though, and there is one in particular right over the Philippine Sea um, that is showing one or two little signs of life. And we'll take a look at that properly when we look at the models shortly. But apart from that, uh, very quiet across the Western Pacific today. Indian Ocean, there's a land depression uh, trawling across India itself, moving westwards uh, towards the western part of the country now, uh, but elsewhere it's looking generally fairly quiet. Usual spots getting the monsoonal pattern, uh, the eastern part of the Bay of Bengal in particular, and in the southern hemisphere around the Australian region and beyond, We've got a few frontal systems, uh, one on the west coast and one moving through New Zealand and New Caledonia. Um, nothing of a tropical nature at all, as you would expect. Let's check today's sea surface temperatures and you can see the SSTs underneath Yvette are alright, 28 degrees Celsius roughly, but I imagine upwelling will get to it pretty quickly at this point. Um, already over tracks of previous storms that already did a little bit of upwelling previously. The Atlantic very warm and on standby for those potential tropical cyclones that might form soon. Gulf of Mexico boiling at 30 degrees in most places and the Sargasso Sea very warm as well, the Gulf Stream looking good. Indian Ocean 
28 degrees, pretty much what you can expect there. The Western Pacific then, obviously of more interest. Uh, the northern part of the South China Sea, a decent 30 degree swathe there now. And in the Philippine Sea, very warm temperatures extending through the Ryukyu Islands, which actually looks to be the hot point in the Western Pacific at the moment, over 30 degrees Celsius. And still along the eastern Chinese coast, warm waters off there as well, much above average, also trailing along the northern side of Japan. Here you can see the anomalies around the world. Uh, and as you can see, the higher latitudes are more above average than the lower latitudes in general. Western Pacific, though, is above as a general rule, and the Atlantic is mostly above average, uh, but around average in the Gulf of Mexico and in some parts of the Caribbean. But take a look here at the... Um Oceanic heat content and very high values in the Caribbean Sea. If storms find themselves there, they're going to have a whale of a time. And in the Western Pacific, also the same story off the Philippine coast, which is pretty normal. Philippines always gets battered by typhoons. And along the coast of Mexico, uh, starting to uptick there as well, and in the Gulf of California. Let's check those computer models then. And first of all, we're looking at what's, uh, what is Tropical Storm Yvette there. And it slowly meanders towards the west northwest and there's not much to see really when we take a look at actually what happens we're not even showing you the atlantic because that's very quiet in the five day period so uh, there's no point showing you anything that's going on there and we've also got some gaps in the model coverage as well on this occasion i'm not sure why that is uh, but just a few frames that we have missing in the western pacific you can see that system that aforementioned and then it moves up towards okinawa actually if it had a center it would be moving right over okinawa and then over the rest of uh, southwestern japan later on shouldn't become a tropical cyclone indeed it's not even been designated with a percentage chance so it looks like that will just be a tropical low pressure system that moves through and could deliver some locally significant rainfall Behind that there's another little system that's barely traceable there, but it is indeed there. Moderate range or medium range, 5 to 10 days, take a look at what happens here. Uh, looks like there's another little system that moves off the coast of Mexico in the same area as Yvette, and then later on a stronger signal occurring from much deeper in the tropics there, uh, off the coast of Central America towards the end of that 10 day run so that could be another phantom model uh, a phantom storm from the gfs longer range especially when you get that far out but there it is once again becoming a tropical storm off the coast of oaxaca western pacific is generally mixed signals there as well you see lots of uh, wind profiles there and possible storms that form there's one skirting off the coast of japan well out to sea uh, and then also maybe another system nearer the central pacific but still in the west pack there towards the end of that uh, loop they are quite common in august especially later on in the month uh, generally at higher latitudes around 20 degrees you can see it there once again so in certain pictures there that's all the important stuff done you can scan the barcode and take a look at the force 13 merch store for all of our current products and you can also request animations individual storms and full seasons also, we're still waiting for Hone, just in case that wasn't uh, clear. Into the Silly Range then, and we take a look at the Atlantic and an extremely broad uh, tropical system moving off as a wave from Cape Verde and then eventually becomes, yes, a tropical storm. That would be the 30th of August though, and that would be the d name storm if that happened right around the 30th of august now let's not forget 2019 had its d storm around that time as well uh, i'm not saying it's going to be a dorian i'm just saying that it's a slow start to the season but it can build up fast when we get into september that becomes a hurricane on that very long range there eastern pacific we get a short-lived storm that plows into mexico there and actually re-emerges and it looks like it goes again yep there it is extremely small tight core possibly becomes a hurricane before striking i think it's sonora or maybe nayarit in mexico uh, there it is again going through towards the end of the month once again that is extremely long range and i wouldn't put any money on that form whatsoever still interesting to look at and in the western pacific 
Uh, we should get a more clear-cut storm on this run. There it is, I think. Another rather small tropical tropical cyclone moving off northwards and then eventually northeastwards and maybe another one trying to form at the very end of that loop there much broader uh, and has a lot more trouble trying to establish itself once again extremely long range i think what this is really telling us is that it doesn't look likely that we're going to see a massive big or powerful storm this month Meanwhile, on this day, on August 16th, 2007, we did have just that. Sepat was a Category 5 storm in the Philippine Sea to the northeast of the Philippines. And we also had three storms in the Western Hemisphere, Dean, Erin and Flossie. Flossie was coming off its Category 4 peak, Erin was about to make landfall in Texas, and Dean was on its way up towards its eventual Category 5 strength in the Atlantic, I'm sure everyone remembers it, and its brother Felix. So, quite a busy day, and that was 15 years ago now. In the Atlantic Ocean, the next name on the list this year is Danielle. In the Eastern Pacific now, we'll be looking out for Javier. In the Central Pacific, the next name on the list is still Hone. In the Western Pacific, we are still waiting for Matt on after one or two systems we were watching just a little bit that never got anywhere. Citrang is next up in the North Indian Ocean. We've not seen any sign of that recently, although 3A must have come close. And in the Southern Hemisphere coming up, we have Darian in the Australian region, Ashley in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Harley in the South Pacific. That's all for tonight. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.